beginning to enjoy more this particular season I'm in that God is working on me and developing in me some graces. Remember when you used to know what that meant? But that's what he's doing in me, is working on graces. You know, graces like peace and love and mercy and tenderness, sensitivity, caring, joy. For someone like me, it's very easy to be wound up when you're an A-type personality and you can, spur of the moment, become inspired by just a thought or a vision or a dream or an idea or whatever it may be. But when you're a person that can be easily inspired, it's sometimes challenging because you get to where you're so wound up for so often that you forget how to wind down to walk. Have you ever walked with God just alone? You know, to spend that quiet time? That's kind of what it's like, is that, you know, I, I used to smile and I still do at my wife because I harass her mercilessly about smoking, you know, because I really want her to quit smoking. But, you know, there's one thing to be said that's really amazing is that when you're a smoker, you get a chance to take a cigarette break, to take a break, to get away from it all, to kick back for a few minutes, to have a cigarette, to think, to feel that change come on you from the nicotine. And of course, it's, it's a negative thing, but in some ways, it's a good thing. You know, God can use that. He could take that time and rearrange it for you and make it into something that could be sublime for you. Because then you could take a moment to reflect, to think, to talk. You know, and I, I noticed that that happens a lot. You know, there's always this little group that, you know, they get together and they have a cigarette break, you know, and stand around talking. And I used to go out and, until the smoke finally got to me, I used to go out and talk to people that way. You know, it was kind of fun. It was fun to share. Coffee breaks used to be that way. You know, it used to be coffee and cigarette, I guess. You know, and I'd drink coffee, but I didn't smoke a cigarette. And that would, you know, always, you know, there was like the old idea of pick me up, you know. And in your physical body, sometimes you need that because you've been going, going, going for so long that you need a pick me up, a, a moment to kind of regroup, you know, refocus, to kind of get all your faculties back together. And kind of a cigarette break is good for that. And that's kind of what a coffee break used to be. Have you ever thought about a spiritual break like that? You know, to stop what you're doing, to refocus, especially if you're going through something like, say maybe you're dealing with monetary issues. Then take a break, you know, stop for a minute, in the middle of it. Just stop, step back and refocus. Or maybe you're going through a emotional time where you have a relationship that you're in and you're kind of like going nuts over it and it's driving you crazy. Well, have a cigarette break. Stop in the middle of it. Step back from it. Think it through. Take a moment to reflect, to consider it in a different way. Or maybe you have health issues and you know, you're, you're terrified of all that's going on. Well, stop for a moment and reflect and take time with God to kind of let it go, to relax and just be still so that He can maybe share with you what He's thinking about. It. Or maybe you could share with Him what you're feeling and how you don't like something about it. The reason why I mention that is because just recently I was confronted in a very dramatic way. It was, it was kind of sad, you know, in a way. Now that I think about it, I had 24 hours to reflect on it. And I was confronted by a believer, you know, and told me to do something, you know, and my first reaction was that, okay, I'll get to it. You know, it was kind of casual. 
And the person was more serious than that. And I didn't treat it that serious. And so then they enforced their authority by, you know, confronting me. And <laughs> I answered the same way. And evidently that wasn't the right way to answer. And so it turned into a conflict of interest. Now, there's probably a lot more to the story, and I'm sure there is. And I'm sure God will take care of the parts that aren't said or spoken. But the parts that were, you know, I was thinking about that more. And I thought, I remember when I used to just walk along and see people get challenged by something like that, where they would be confronted by someone that would come at them with hostility or be all ticked off. And if you react to hostility, you provoke hostility. In other words, violence begets violence. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And the violent person will die by violent means. I mean, it just is true. It's a scripture in God's kingdom. And I was thinking about how I don't want to be like that. You know, the person that I was confronted with, I thought, you know, I don't want to get a reputation like that. Because lately my wife's been talking to me about how sometimes in sharing and in the ministry, you know, you get done with it and you're not ready for something. And somebody, you know, she mentioned something to me. And I guess I snap or maybe I don't come across as goofy as I normally do with her. Because one thing I learned was that with my wife, it's easier to be goofy and humorous than it is to be serious. And we get communication that we communicate better that way. And so I worked at it and made myself into kind of a goofball to communicate in a better way than I had previously. And she likes it. But she doesn't like when there are times in our relationship when it's not peaceful, when it's not loving, when it seems to be more frustrating and aggravating. Have you ever walked into a room like that where a person obviously is aggravated and angry and you can feel it in the air? You sense it. You know there's something there, a spirit as it were. Well, that's what happened when I went back to confront it. And I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like how it affected me. And I had to come home and pray about it. And I didn't like the way it went inside me and kind of gave me acid, really. But, you know, dealt with it peacefully and resolved it. But the point is, what kind of Christian do we want to be? Do you really want to be someone out there fighting fires that God can put out? Do you really want to be a violent Christian, you know, always in confrontation and conflict? I don't. You know, I've I've been listening to the Lord lately saying about, you know, doing less and backing off some and, you know, doing more quality and, than quantity. Because I'm very good at passing out quantity. I get a lot done in a little bit of time. But lately I've been thinking, you know, maybe if we took... And we have some time left. I mean, I don't know if you realize this, but no, we're not going to get raptured in 2011. <laughs> Sorry, and it's not going to happen in 2012. You know, we didn't, or I should have said, it didn't happen in 2011. Now it's not going to happen in 2012. But, you know, from 2013 onward, you could kind of look for it. It's probably, oh, I don't know, 40% chance in 13, maybe 40% in 14, maybe 60% in 15, about 15 onward, 17, yeah, in there. 15, 16, 17, probably in the high 60s and 70%. So we have a little bit of time left, but God's been wanting to work with me to, I think, prepare me for heaven, you know, what it's going to be like, where we don't worry about things, but we enjoy more what we see. We worship more. We develop more of our graces, as it were. And I was thinking maybe, maybe you feel the same way too, that maybe you want to develop some of your good graces, like taking more time with God than you take with everything else. In other words, you don't just slot him in for a 15-minute morning devotional, but you 
begin to open up the doors to something new that he might want to do with you. That you begin to yield your control of your life back to him. Because maybe you've taken back control in some way that you've designed some automatic routines that you're going through. That you become so dogmatic that God can't have you do something different. Maybe tomorrow or today. Expect something new. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Isn't that a nice thought? In the morning, we know that God hears our voice, so we, we pray. But listen to that last part. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Maybe we should think about that and begin to do that in our own life, to wait in expectation, to wait for God to answer. Not to run forward, not to jump ahead, not to go out and you know kind of manipulate your way to get what you want, but to wait, confident that God will answer. I like that. I think I need to apply that to my life right now as I'm preparing to move and do all kinds of things. I think I need to wait on the Lord and let Him reveal what He wants than to jump at the first thing that comes along. If you get up and do the exact same thing every morning, you may get bored after a month or so, but seeking God when you first wake up is never boring. He will always have a new revelation ready for you to hear. Keep your expectation fresh by changing what you do in your time with God. You might worship Him. You might worship the Lord with singing one morning, listen to Christian music another morning, read God's Word the third morning, sit in His presence or confess His Word the following morning. Let the Holy Spirit lead you as you learn to enjoy starting your day with God. So you see, really, if this be true, then as the Holy Spirit inspires you, if you're reading a devotional and you're just not getting anything out of it, set it down and begin to sing. Or begin to wait. I know for me right now it's a matter of waiting. It's backing up and taking a step back and saying, I want to think about this for a while. I want to listen carefully to what the Lord might say. I want to see what God might do. Because He's promised me lots of things and some things are still yet to come true. And so I want to wait and watch and see how the Lord will bring salvation to me. Because I'm confident of this very thing that the trials that I've gone through and the challenges that I've had in doing the ministry have all been preparation for this time that's coming where we will see the Lord's return. And I've been trying to set this up to get ready for, you know, lots of people, you know, to find Jesus. And I think when you're trying to build a highway to the sky, like Keith Green said, all your hopes might come tumbling down until he takes you by surprise. And then he will do what he wants to do. And when he's lifted up, all kinds of people get involved. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's a word for you today. Maybe that's an encouragement. Maybe that's a devotion for you to not worry about what emotions you're feeling right now, but to turn your eyes back unto the Lord and not really to ask so much or to seek, but to wait on the Lord.